Uh, meanwhile, this morning, there are growing concerns for the Joe Biden camp as uh, former President Obama reportedly, according to The Washington Post, has pushed for a more aggressive campaign, warning about the risk that Joe could lose to Donald Trump. And you can't blame him for being worried as the latest polling average shows Trump edging ahead of Biden in a hypothetical matchup, as you can see, 46 to 44. So what does his own party think? Let's talk to a couple of Democrats. Join us right now. Screen left, the five co-hosts and former Democratic Congressman Harold Ford Jr., along with former Democratic New York State Senator David Carlucci. Guys, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, so Harold, it's not surprising. It sounds like they had a, a lunch a couple of months ago. It's now being reported that apparently Joe said, you know what, you need somebody at your headquarters, your campaign headquarters, who can make decisions. Because right now they had to go through the White House. They weren't very nimble. First, thanks for having me on, belated Happy New Year. Thanks, I think this sir. happens during campaigns. I mean, the, the data here shows, David and I have known each other a long time and have been around campaigns for a long time, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are not a few more meetings. But you look at kind of the meat of where they are, the substance of where they are. We were talking a little bit before going on air. Uh, the economy is improving. Uh, the social issues favoring Biden that in the last two elections that we've had, abortion or reproductive rights, women's health care choices have been on the ballot, and Democrats have done well. On the Republican side, if you're them, and I think what probably President Obama was urging President Biden to think about is the border and other issues are critical issues. If you don't empower people at your campaign headquarters, which is 100 miles away from D.C., mm -hmm. to make decisions, uh, you could find yourself behind the proverbial political eight ball uh, in, at, at a terrible time. So I, I wouldn't be surprised they didn't have one or two more of these meetings. And Democrats have to have to acknowledge, and Republicans too, we've not had a more successful campaigner, at least in our party, over the last 20 years than Barack Obama. Sure, but David, remember, Barack Obama essentially chose Hillary Clinton to replace him and said, yeah, Joe, just uh, not your turn, go sit down. Well, right. I mean, hey, it was the, 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 the timing, right? And it's important to listen to President Obama. He walked the walk. He was in the similar situation at the time, going into re-election. Remember, he was at that time record low favorability. <laughs> and so I think what Obama is trying to relay to President Biden is that it's not about boasting, right? The economy is doing well. We see the indicators. People might not the have numbers are felt good, it but yet. People don't feel That's it. right. They don't feel it. So boasting is not working. What you have to do is contract. That would, that's what you saw at a Valley Forge. It's about saying, hey, you might not be happy with all that I'm doing, right. but you'll be really sad if you elect presi uh, next President Donald Trump. Right. And um, that's why you see the contrast. It's about people don't believe the positive. They believe the negative. So you better switch it and say, hey, this is what you're going to get mm -hmm. with the Trump presidency. But, you know, Harold, uh, the current president hasn't really attacked by name the former president until this past Friday when he came out. Uh, guns blazing, talking about January 6th. Today he's going to talk about the terrible shooting down in uh, Charleston. And then at the end of the month, he's going to talk about abortion. Essentially, he's let uh, Trump run up the score, and Biden's just been sitting on his hands. Look, I probably would have done it a little differently, but they're doing it now the way I think it should be done. David raises a, a great point just in terms of, of, of the contrast you have to begin to draw between the two candidates. Look, this is going to be a tough race. Democrats should not kid ourselves. Donald Trump is as good a political athlete as we could face mm -hmm. uh, going, going forward. This may be the longest general election in my lifetime, and we'll see if, the pre if former President Trump can settle these things early right. February. If he does, um, we'll get a big fight about the economy. You can't tell people they're safer, they're healthier, they're doing economically better if they don't believe that. You've got to get out and demonstrate what you've done and why four more years will help you do even more. David, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Yeah, but, I, I but think you'll make it 20. I, yeah, that's right. I think it's about contrast, right? You, negative campaigning works. It works for a reason. It's unfortunate. It's the environment we're living in. Once we get out of this primary, if Donald Trump is the lead contender, uh, that contrast is going to be so important. One scandal after the other. Every day we hear something about Donald Trump. Doesn't matter for the primary, but it can't bode well for independent voters. So I think ultimately this will lead to another victory for Biden. That was 24 seconds. All right. Uh, David Carlucci, <laughs> Harold Ford Jr., thank you very much, guys. Great to be with you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.